everybody, Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great uh, week so far. Hope you had a great day today, no matter what it is that you were out to accomplish. Work, play, rest. I hope that you got it to the fullest. Um, I believe in those of you who follow me know this, I believe in optimizing time for whatever it is you're supposed to be doing in that moment. Do it well, do it with great intent and uh, with everything that you had. Uh, with that being said, look, uh, we are still in the middle of a fundraiser for the work we do in the community. Uh, everything from programs with our youth, Black Men Lead, Restoring Ghettos Forgotten Daughters, our young adults, uh, which both of those uh, programs also apply to. Um, music is Life, where we're teaching music as a means of creativity, self-confidence, and so much more. Uh, the Black Community Empowerment Initiative. Uh, our research arm and our think tank arm, uh, one of several Black think tanks in America, just three that I'm aware of. Uh, and we come up with solutions. We've been doing this for a couple of decades plus, um, and we're still going strong. Uh, I've done thousands of hours of research. I've overseen uh, thousands of hours of research, and we're still moving forward. We have to be better prepared. So again, we want to ask that you support the work we do so that we can continue to do it and that we can actually take it to the next level. I'm going to talk about two things real quickly here. Um, because they're central, centrally focused and it, it, lead, it, and it basically comes back to a common conversation that I'm going to be having with you guys moving forward. But <clears throat> first of all, uh, the murder, the senseless murder of PMB uh, Rock, I think that's his name, PMB Rock, um, the rapper. Uh, I think he's from Philly, out in L.A. What everybody who goes to L.A. wants to do is head to Roscoe. It's been there a bunch of different times over the course of my life visiting L.A., which I did a lot in the late 90s and the early, uh, the late 90s and the early 2000s. Um, one thing you got to know about this particular Roscoe's, the original Roscoe's, it's not in Melrose, it's not on Melrose, it's not on Rodeo Drive, it's in South LA. And it is what it is. Uh, what I want to touch on briefly is something that I think that uh, Jay Prince probably put as clearly and only <laughs> as he could. Uh, I'm not trying to mirror what he said or how he said it, but basically, there are a lot of people out there now going after his girlfriend saying that uh, she basically got him killed because she was on Instagram, which gave away her location. And, you know, um, it is what it is. All right. As someone who's been around, been around the game and been in that arena for a while, I grew up in the music industry. Uh, decided I would take the athletic route and the business route. And so uh, my brother's still a recording art artist. My uh, uh, nephew, my oldest nephew, his oldest son is the drummer for the rapper Toby and uh, And they're on tour in Europe right now. I mean, so I've been around this stuff uh, forever. Um, Odyssey Project and Odyssey Media Group is actually the birthing and evolution of Odyssey Entertainment. If anybody's ever been on my Facebook page and go down, you'll see a photo album that says before the transformation. And so I've been in this game and let me tell you something, the game is unforgiving. And when you end the game, you need to know the game. But a lot of times what you have is a bunch of people who are living lives that they may not really truly understand or playing games in a sense, and I don't mean playing games like playing, I mean playing in a game that they don't truly understand to the fullest. There are just certain things you don't do. I think Jay Prince pointed it out. You don't roll up. I mean, it's the it's, it, it's got to the point, you got to remember uh, that Nipsey got killed on his spot. And so the idea that I can roll like I want to roll in my hood, 
you know, on my set or whatever. That is not necessarily the case now. Uh, like Jay said, the wolves out there are trying to eat, and a wolf, a wolf is not at one bit at all concerned with what type of person you are, if you good peeps or whatever. A wolf's only concern is eating. A lion's only concern is eating. A predator's only concern is eating. They're not worrying about you. From what I understand, another mistake the kid made was he didn't give it up. Somebody runs up on you, put a gun in your face, give it up. Give it up as quickly and as unabruptly as you possibly can. Ain't not a damn thing on this planet worth your life. Your family's left behind now because you're trying to hold on to something. Somebody, when a, you got to believe that when these cats put that, that that heat in your face, that they don't have problem giving you all of it, all the smoke you want. They will give it to you, and uh, you're gonna give it to them, and they're gonna take it. You might as well give it to them, live to fight another day. But here's a bigger thing. When you roll in on your when you roll in off your set, off the space where you're comfortable at, off the space where you got the type of protection that you should have in order to be wearing that kind of money around your neck and on your wrist and in your mouth and on your ears and wherever else you was wearing it at, you gotta have the right type of security that's gonna sit up and say you good. If you don't have that type of security, leave that shit at the hotel room locked in the safe. Put it on when you go out to wherever it is you're performing at or whatever you're doing that's got you on the move in this town. But understand, there ain't too many towns where they don't get down. I mean, you go almost anywhere. If a cat catch you slipping, you out of there. Now, do you need to have talks with your ladies about proper protocol when you're on the road? Absolutely. Don't give away our spot. Don't do this. Let me tell you something. I'm pretty sure that everywhere they've gone, that's been her MO. You know, hey, we here, we doing this, blah, 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 blah. And that's been it. And, you know, and nothing's happening. And I'm obviously, he hasn't said anything to her about it because she, she's still doing it. Uh, I don't think that blaming her for an unfortunate incident you blame the cats that rolled up on him. You blame him being bright and loud in a place that he did not control the environment. You know, I, I, I'm not one that's going to sit up and say, hey, man, it's her fault. Uh, should you know better? I mean, I don't give away my location now, and I ain't rolling like that. Uh, you don't ask for smoke. Like, you know, when when I was out there doing things, you know, uh, we had BET Awards, the NBA All-Star Game, Super Bowl, uh, these things, uh, SS, these things that come around uh, annually that everybody's at. And that was just certain things that we understood. Number one is them D-Town cats. When I say D-Town, I ain't talking Dallas. I'm talking Detroit. Them cats rolling and they not playing. I don't care. Every big event where it's going to be ballers at, these cats at, and they handling business. So you understood how you move, how you act, how you how you get around, how you do it. And then you got to understand, in every town, there are cats like that, that's hungry, that don't have no problem. Life ain't going the way they want it to go. Nobody's there mentoring them. Nobody's there helping them. Nobody's there showing them a different route. And all they they see is street all they see is lack all they see when you roll up is opportunity and what are they going to do they're going to come get you we losing rappers like a rate of once a month i mean at the height of what we were doing we, we were pushing hard hell against the rap we weren't losing rappers like that i mean behind senseless stuff and then think man people getting killed in spaces that you don't think they should get killed like i said nip got killed on his spot a spot he owned that he was looking out for that everybody loved him on rolled up and shot him dead okay Dolph, in the cookie shop donut shop whatever it was getting cookies from what i understand for his moms um uh, and it's uh what let's do pop smoke uh, out in la in the shower these cats don't have a problem rolling up on you. 
understand the game, you in the game, understand you got a target on your back, whether you made enemies or you think you have made enemies or not, you got people out there trying to get at you. Now, why is this big to me? Because it goes back to the core of what I'm so passionate about. We are not taking care of young black boys. When you don't do it, there's an African saying that says that if the child can't feel the love of the village, it'll burn it down to feel its warmth. Our young boys burning the goddamn village down. And we sitting around talking about, oh my God, shaking my head. Eventually, it's going to get to us because the flames are up and it's moving and it's roaring and it's not subsiding. These kids are tired. They don't see anything happening. They don't have a place. But you you got to understand, young black boys going to school at five years old, they're already being alienated in the school, from the school, which means that they're more likely to drop out of school, which means they're more likely to become incarcerated, which means more likely to have a life of criminality because being incarcerated makes them a whole lot less employable as already being the most unemployed population in the U.S. And then you, you, don't, you don't understand why they're out there doing that. Poverty is dictating it. Is there an answer to it? Yes. Is there a way out? Yes. Are there other options? Yes. Other options only matter when you know they're there. If you grew up and your dad's in prison for putting in work, however he put in work, and all you see on the streets are the boys he left behind that's teaching you the game how to do it on the street. Who told you about the options? Who told you you could start your own business? Who told you you could take that same hustle that you got on the street and legitify, uh, legitimize it and move into an arena where you can get all the paper you want that you could actually be the bosses that's signing these cats to these deals instead of robbing these cats? Somebody's got to be able to tell you that. These kids matter, man. That's why I mentor as many as I mentor. Because they matter. That's why I have the program set up to socialize. Because they matter. And they don't matter just because they matter to me. They matter because they're our future. You can't keep saying the truth of the future and then think black boys aren't a part of that. Who are going to be the protectors of our daughters? Who are going to be uh, the representation of manhood in our enclave, in a patriarchal society where men are running things? Why do you think they don't have a problem with so many of our, our young, baby, young, young baby girls matriculating into higher education and moving into corporate America? Because it's not just about the earning, it's about the power. The power is still held by men. You need men to move. You also need men to physically protect you. The problem is our men are harming our own, our women. Second leading, second leading cause of death from ages from, from black females ages 15 to 44 intimate partner homicide we need to we need to confront that we, sitting up talking about how horrible it is and, and, and leaving it at that doesn't fix it we need to do it there's a way to do it there's a way to mitigate violence there's a way to mitigate dropouts there's a way to mitigate criminality and incarceration it's literally available you racially socialize that kid starting at three and four and five years old and you inculcate their identity their responsibility what they're striving for you give them a clear definition of what manhood is what a man does what a man does not do and you give it to them early often and you make it a part of who they are so much that they operate uh, everybody in this world operates off their self-image their identity if you give a young black male the identity of a king, the, the identity of a business owner, the identity, identity of a, a father, a husband, a family man, he will become it. He will find his way to it. He will fight for it. But if you don't, he's going to struggle to discover who he is. He's going to struggle to know what he's supposed to do. He's going to fight for recognition and a position of power of some sorts because it's in his DNA as a male. He's got to have something that he feels he controls. And even though that block ain't his, he's killing over it. We've got a lot of work to do. That's why the programs we have are so important. Now, move on to something a little less, but still significant. And I'm going to try to do this briefly because uh, I'm preparing for a meeting here. Um... But hey, check this out. Everybody is 
losing it one way or another over this Little Mermaid thing. Um, there are a number of different perspectives and viewpoints. Uh, the simple question is, is it important to have black representation in characters and roles of beauty, of majesty, of power, absolutely. Here's my thing. Why not create our own? Why not take ownership of something ourselves? Why do we feel we've won because Disney does one of the best marketing moves I've seen in a while? Well, they take it and they give us what we want. Per and they knew, trust me, what you got to understand is companies that big and definitely in media, media understands behavior. Media understands what drives behavior. Media understands what people are looking for. Media understands how to make them move and change what they're doing and how to get the most out of a situation. Trust me, before they ever made the decision to cast uh, whichever one of the little Bailey girls that is, uh, I, I get them confused. I don't keep up with them enough to know. But it's one of them. Uh, when they decided to cast her in Little Mermaid, they already knew we're going to win a lot of black people who have left or who never were a part of our audience, a part of our supporting system, and they're going to come. We're going to retain some whites who it don't even matter. We're going to enrage other extreme uh, whites who are going to be livid because of it, but all that's going to do is bring more attention and drive more black people to support it. And they understand that. They're about the bottom line. Has nothing to do with diversity. Has nothing to do with racial equality. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't change anything about what's going on. Outside, little black girls have one more black image to look at in a positive light. I would much rather see us create our own. Our own print uh, media. Our own social media. Our own film. And uh, I've been working uh, with a, a, a couple of uh, filmmakers and a couple of producers and a couple of actors about ways to get this done. And there's a way to do it. It's absolutely doable, but we're gonna have to step out of the shadows of feeling that we need to shine in their space. Let them have their space, let them have their characters, let them have all that. That, that shit isn't, isn't, isn't what's, what it's about. You know what, 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 what the real flex is? Instead of having a black character in a white role, a white traditional role, for the sake of saying we, we've got representation, the real flex is to create an entire system where we decide what we want, when we want it, how we want it, and we cast who we want in it, and we don't have to get anybody's approval sitting in the desk, that sitting behind a desk that don't look like us because we're doing it. One of the reasons why... Uh, regardless of where, whether I'm in total agreement with something he says or not, that I've always supported Tyreek is because he's gone out and he's done stuff and he's done it without having to seek approval or get funding from everyone else. We need to do more stuff like that. Uh, one of my friends, Tony Lindsay, is a, a, a filmmaker out of New York. He created a great movie. He funded it and produced it himself, brought in a couple of heavy hitter actors. He worked it out and figured it out, got it done, got it funded. And we've talked about ways to make this more common, uh, you know, and without selling out, you know, obviously we've got a couple of black people out there doing some things and I'm, I'm, I'm starting to wonder about a couple. I'm not going to call names because I'm not ready to tag them wrong, but uh, I, I'm definitely disappointed uh, in the way that Tyler Perry has played his hand. He created a very powerful space. He created something that says, I don't need you. And then he just basically turned into a trauma meal. Where's the power at? Where is the love at? Where's the healing at? All of this trauma, all this bull crap. And my thing is, I'm all for entertainment. I'm all for diversity. I'm all for embellishment. But there has to be something that shows the reason I did this was for healing. The reason I did some power. I did this to get here, but this is what I want to really give you. I want to laugh like everybody else. I enjoy laughing. Matter of fact, anybody who actually knows me tell you I'm probably a one of the biggest clowns you're ever going to get in person. I'm steady going the whole time. That's just who I am. Uh, I keep everybody laughing. 
but there's got to be something that governs how we get our lives. Like I talked about that whole Tiffany Haddish, Irish Spears thing. Nothing funny about that shit. Nothing funny about it at all. And yeah, I'm, I'm in that space right now. So if I'm offending you with some of the words I'm using, I apologize. But I'm, I, I'm being authentically and loosely who I am. If you were to sit down and talk to me, uh, I use profanity. Um, here, here, here is the thing that we have to look at is we have to protect our children at all costs. We have to protect our women. Uh, we need to heal and protect young boys so they become strong black men so they can be protectors. Uh, we can't expect broken boys to become strong, healed, and productive men. Nothing about that even sounds remotely uh, right or proper. So we are out of line. We're out of sync with where we should be. We're not putting in the work. We're not investing in ourselves in the way we should. And we're constantly seeking space in that place. The last time we did this, we got screwed real bad. That's when we were looking for integration. And Dr. King had to admit after it was over that I've integrated my people into a burning building. That we're literally surrendering everything that we own, which is our power to be able to patronize their businesses do you really realize what we did we had our own movie theaters we had our own taxi cab companies our bus companies we had our own cleaners we had everything we needed we were operating we were building we were strong uh, and it wasn't just in Tulsa. It w wasn't just in Rosewood. It wasn't just in Wilmington, North Carolina. It wasn't just in Slocum, Texas, uh, East St. Louis, or, or Chicago, in, 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 in pockets of Chicago. We were doing it at, on, on, almost anywhere. In, 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 in the South, in, in, on the East and the West, we were doing it. And we had a need to be accepted. We had a need to be able to walk into their diners, into their restaurants, into their movie theaters, get in their cabs, ride on their buses to the point that we gave it all up. And then we realized we gave up our power and we were now funding theirs by way of patronizing their businesses, their economy. We made that mistake. So my thing is, OK. Congratulations, little Bailey girl. Uh, I just don't know her name. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Uh, I just don't know which one is which. And um, But congratulations on it. I haven't seen it. Um, I'm not saying I'm not going to see it. You know, uh, my daughter wants to see it. She's going to see it. But she's going to see it with context and explanation. That's one thing I do with my kids, regardless of age. Context and explanation and expectation. What what you should be striving for, what you should be looking for, what you should be aiming at. Uh, and I think we need to be aiming higher. Um, again, uh, I'm not taking aim at anybody. I'm just saying I think we need to be aiming higher. Uh, on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here and get ready for this meeting. Uh, thank you guys for dropping in and uh, letting me talk to you and share with you. Um, on that note, I think that's about it. Uh, once again, thanks, and uh, we'll talk with you guys later.